Thanks to Uscreen for sponsoring this video. Looking back on my over a decade of YouTube, I've realized that one major mistake has held me back from seeing more growth, engagement, and business opportunities than I've already had. And don't get me wrong, I feel really grateful for how far I've come. I just know that I could have gotten there faster and with less struggle had I not made this mistake. And hopefully with this video, I can keep you from making it as well. So my friend, let's sit down for a little coffee chat with Katie as we discuss the biggest mistake that I've made in my YouTube career. And this was especially something that I fell into in the early years, but I'm not completely immune to it now. So let's talk about what it is and what I did to fix it. I'm personally drinking an oat milk latte with vanilla syrup, which I painstakingly made in the van this morning. It takes extra work to make it hot to steam the milk and everything. Thing, and now I'm like, girl, you should have just made it ice. It is so hot in here. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you're drinking or what you would be drinking if you were partaking in this coffee hour. Okay, so for you to fully understand the strategic mistake that I made that really cost me a lot, I think, when it comes to my YouTube growth, I first need to explain to you the help, hub, and hero framework for growth on YouTube. Now, I've talked about this before in other videos, but just as a quick explainer, the Help Hub and Hero method was actually a framework for YouTube strategy and YouTube growth that YouTube themselves released in their now retired YouTube certification program. So you used to be able to get a certificate in YouTube strategy from YouTube themselves and they would teach this framework in that program. And basically what it comes down to is three categories or three different types of videos that you can make for your channel. And the idea is if you balance out this three prong strategy, you'll have a good approach for growth on the platform. So those three categories are help, hub, and hero. Help content is your basic SEO, kind of like answering frequently asked questions, tutorials, basically the kind of content that your audience might be searching for. The idea with help content is that you really address search and you provide value to people. Now hub content, that's like your staple weekly episodes. That's the kind of content that your core audience is coming back for week after week. It's not necessarily gonna perform really well in search or pop off on the homepage, but it's the kind of thing that your core audience really appreciates and it helps them get more connected with you. Where I think tutorials are like the classic help style of content, vlogs are really the classic hub style of content, if that helps you understand it. And our final category is hero content. Hero content are those big swings for virality. It's the kind of videos that you make for a really broad audience. It's the kind of stuff that shows up on the homepage and really helps your channel with rapid growth because it reaches an audience that wasn't already watching you. So essentially this three prong approach covers finding people through search traffic, finding people through homepage virality and nurturing your current audience. Okay, so now that we can understand this sort of three-sided approach to YouTube growth, you could understand where I went wrong. So here was my massive mistake. I focused way too heavily on help content. Now, as I was saying, this is something that I did a lot in the past, but I'm not immune to it now either. Just recently, I kind of fell into the SEO traffic temptation. So truthfully, I saw another YouTuber do this and I was like, oh my God, I should try it. Like this will really work for getting me more views. So if you go into your YouTube analytics and you go to the content section and you scroll down to hear how viewers find your videos, if you click on see more and then you click on YouTube search, you can see a list of all the search terms that that people have found your channel using. And so the idea is if you make videos about these topics, oh my God, everybody's looking for them. So you're gonna get good results with that video. Specifically for me, I noticed that best vlogging camera 2023 was one of the top search terms that people were using to find my channel, even though I didn't even have a video about it. Some of these others make sense, right? Like how to start a podcast, how to start a YouTube channel, Instagram reels, starting a podcast. I have videos about all that stuff, but I didn't have a video about the best vlogging camera. So I was like, perfect. I'm gonna make a video about that and it is just gonna blow up because clearly the people want it. Um, and then I made it and posted it and it was like eight or nine out of 10. Okay, now to be fair, when it comes to videos that are optimized for search traffic, they might not perform well right away. Who knows, we could check back in in six months and this video might have like, you know, half a million views or something. Who knows, a girl can dream. But for now it's significantly underperformed compared to my other content. My other content mostly being stuff that I create that's optimized for the homepage, not necessarily for search. And I think what this comes down to is realistically, not a lot of people are finding my content via search in the grand scheme of things. If we look at my search terms over the past 90 days, you'll see that best vlogging camera 2023, okay, 933 people found me from that. 
in the past three months. So yeah, in the first week of me posting that video, I'm probably not gonna get 10,000 views from people finding it via search, right? Also, if we look at the grand scheme of things in general, if we change this back to, let's just say the last 90 days, how viewers found my videos, only 22% of them found me from YouTube search. Almost 40% found me via browse features, which is basically subscriptions, YouTube homepage. Even though a lot of us are conditioned to think YouTube search is the way to grow, when you actually look at your numbers, you'll probably find that not even close to the majority of your viewers are coming to you via search. And when I think about my own use of the platform, I don't really go on YouTube to search a lot of stuff unless it's very specific tutorials or questions that I have. Usually I find my content from the homepage. Basically, I think this happened to me a lot in the past, but it still does now too, this outsized view of the benefits of optimizing for YouTube search traffic. In all of the tips and tricks and growth strategy videos that I ever watched when I was first growing my YouTube channel, they all really, really emphasize creating videos that could show up in search and growing your audience via YouTube search. Now, I'm not saying that that's never helpful because I do really think that in that early stage of growth, that's gonna be your best bet at getting any new eyes on your channel because in the early stages, it's very, very difficult to get your content pushed to the homepage or recommendations. And so search traffic is gonna be your one kind of guaranteed way to actually get new people watching your channel. So I think that's effective when you're kind of growing to like your first thousand, 10,000 subscribers. But the big mistake that I made was never moving beyond that. I kept using the same strategies that got me to 10,000 subscribers and thinking that that was gonna be the way that I would hit 100,000 and beyond. And by focusing so, so much on that, I actually lost out on opportunities that would have come to me had I started evolving and experimenting sooner. If I'm honest with myself, a big part of why I didn't experiment or evolve is because I got scared to. I really think that as creators, when we finally start seeing something work, we get really scared to try anything different from that. Because like, imagine this, right? For years, I was trying to grow my YouTube channel, not seeing a ton of results. Finally, I do something and I do start to get views. I'm gonna be really hesitant to do anything other than that because clearly that worked. Why would I stop? Everything that I did before that didn't seem to work. So it seems like this is my one golden ticket. It's really intimidating to experiment. I kind of got in this mindset of like, okay, I'm just gonna keep playing the hits. I'm gonna do what the algorithm seems to like or really what the audience seems to like and that that should work right and yes it is true watching your analytics and seeing where the audience demand is that's an important part of YouTube strategy however a really important part of growing an engaged audience or really a community is about keeping things fresh doing something new if you want to keep the same people watching your videos week after week you can't just push out the same tired tutorial every single time will it help you show up in search sure but it's not gonna keep your regular viewers coming back and I think that's where I really made a big mistake, right? Is focusing too much on bringing in new people via search rather than thinking about how I can nurture the community that I already have. Because here's the thing about help style content in that framework, right? It's very transactional. Let's just take a minute to imagine the scenario in which somebody discovers our content. If we're making a help style video, someone maybe comes across it in search as intended because they're searching for something like how to add text to video in Premiere Pro. Okay, so you've made a really clear tutorial that shows exactly how to do that step-by-step -step for beginners. It's great. However, once somebody has finished watching that tutorial, what are they most likely to do? Well, go and add text to their video in Premiere Pro. They're gonna go and take action on what you just taught them. And chances are they might not end up really like binging your channel or subscribing. Which speaking of, if you watch my video about why I'm not asking people to subscribe anymore, if somebody watches like two of your videos, chances are the YouTube algorithm will serve them more of your content. And the thing about help videos is they aren't necessarily bingeable if they're hyper specific and just answer a question. So somebody watches your tutorial and then they go back to doing their thing and they might not watch a second one of your videos or really get connected to you as a creator. It's a transaction, right? They asked YouTube for an answer, they received it and they left. Now, on the other hand, I think that hub and hero content is a lot more relational. Let's say somebody finds your video 
on the YouTube home screen. Chances are they're brought into it because of the story that you're telling, not a question you're answering or, you know, information that you're giving. So they're drawn in by the story, the premise of your title and thumbnail. And if they watch that video and you're a good storyteller, they get connected with you and they want to watch more. And if you have a lot of that style of content on your channel, then they might just start binging it and then they'll have your content recommended to them on their homepage and in their recommendations and they become a part of your community. The nature of hero and hub content is that it's a lot more relational. It builds that relationship with the viewer through storytelling in a way that just basic quick tutorials don't really. Okay, so to bring it back to my own experience, really what I wish I would have done was start focusing on the hub and hero content sooner. I don't regret starting out with the help content. I think that was a good move. I think that you know, you need to start somewhere. But I think that because I got kind of attached to the results that I was seeing and I was scared of experimenting, I kept doing the same thing when I could have had the opportunity to evolve and start really building a relationship with my audience instead of just providing kind of transactional value. And to that end, I think that I got really caught up in some of the YouTube tips around retention, which I do think this is a really difficult balance because it is important, but I got so worried about making my videos long or boring or having too much fluff that I would make them super succinct. And every time I would make it like, okay, this is for somebody who's never seen me before. I want this to be relevant if you've never watched my channel before. And that can be helpful sometimes, but when you do that all the time, it's kind of alienating to your regular viewers because then you never let your personality shine and you never allow that relationship to develop when you kind of stay cold and professional and overly succinct. All of this is difficult because it really is a balance. Everything has its own time and place, but what it comes down to is if you want a successful career as a creator, you really, really need to focus on community. Even though it might feel like the main goal is just getting eyeballs on your content, whether it's from search or from the homepage, really success on YouTube comes down to your ability to nurture a community. Because when you have that community of loyal viewers, these are the people that are gonna have that notification bell on, they're gonna watch your videos as soon as they're released, and they're gonna be that first indicator to the YouTube algorithm of click-through rate, and view duration. And when you have a community of people that have got your back and like what you're doing, they're gonna give you a good click through rate and good view duration and that's really gonna help your videos continue to succeed beyond just your initial community. And if you're looking for a community focused revenue stream as a creator, then I'm really excited to introduce you to Uscreen. Or more likely reintroduce you because if you watch my videos then you'll know I love Uscreen and I love telling y'all about them. So Uscreen is a video membership platform. With a Uscreen account, you can basically create your own Netflix. You can build a video membership site where your viewers can access your exclusive content through a monthly subscription or a one-time payment or a rental fee. It's your choice. In my last video with Uscreen, I talked about how I'm currently building my own. My video membership site is going to include exclusive series like the Creator Masterclass series and the Creator Confession series, where I share in-depth tutorials on viewer requested topics and the behind the scenes of the good, bad, and the ugly of being a full-time creator. So you can look forward to that. I'm hoping to work on that and maybe get it ready for the end of the year. But another amazing feature that Uscreen has is their community feature. Basically, you can host a community forum where your members can get to know each other, ask questions, and generally get more value out of being in your membership with other like-minded people. You can create your own professional white-labeled website, mobile apps, and TV apps using Uscreen. So there's no third-party branding on it at all. It's just completely your brand, which I think is such a nice touch and just makes it feel more professional and exclusive. And between your website, your mobile app and your TV app, you're giving your members full flexibility of where they access your exclusive content. So create your own video membership today using Uscreen. Click the link in my description to find out more. Okay, so now that you know the biggest mistake that I've made on YouTube, where do we go from here? Really what it comes down to is I'm trying to focus on building up that community. You may have noticed in the past little while I've shared more kind of vlog style content. Honestly, I've shied away from that in the past because it hasn't historically performed as well as my help content, so I was scared to ever do it. But more recently, I've been experimenting. I've tried making vlogs that have more of a purpose to them, starting with a really hooky intro to bring you in. And it's actually been working really well, which is super encouraging to see. But even before I started getting more views on those vlogs, when I've experimented with vlogs in the past, I noticed that they would often have, even you know, though they have a lower view count and a lower click-through rate, 
they would have a longer view duration and tend to have more engagement in terms of comments. So it meant the people that were watching were watching to the end and they were leaving more comments than on my more help style videos. So what that indicated to me was my core audience was invested in those videos. Even though they weren't reaching a broader audience or getting a ton of clicks from people outside the community, people who knew me and liked my videos were really enjoying those kind of videos. So that's why I started investing in making that content a little bit more because even though I know it might not go wider than my existing audience, it's something that really nurtures that community. So that's something you can look for for yourself too. Even if your videos aren't getting a high click through rate or a high view count, if you have a long view duration and lots of comments, that's an indicator that your core community likes those videos. I'm also trying to get more conversations going in the comments because I realize that sometimes it can feel pretty one way and I want to get to know the people that are watching my videos. For example, we have gotten to that point, my friends. If you've watched this far in the video, you're officially an MVP of the channel. We're basically besties, so drop a hey in the comments so we can chat. And if you haven't before, introduce yourself so I can get to know you, like where you're from. I think that'd be fun. Also, I'm experimenting with this style of video, a little coffee chat with Katie, which I know is a little bit more casual than what I tend to do, but I think it's fun. And I think sometimes certain topics really suit this format more than like a really fast paced kind of informational video. These incremental strategic changes allow me to experiment, see the results, and then decide where to go moving forward. It's not like I'm doing a complete switch or like a 180 into something different. I'm just testing the waters here and testing the waters there and checking my analytics and looking for those key indicators of the longer view duration and the comments and the likes, those things that really indicate a thriving community rather than just a video that's popping off in search or on the homepage. And really the more Moral of the story is you need to be willing to experiment a little. Go out on a limb, see what happens. Yeah, you might have a video go 10 out of 10 and I know that's hard to see, but the insight and the knowledge that you gain from those experiments are really, really worth it. A bit over a year ago, I was terrified to even try posting vlogs, which are honestly my favorite kind of videos to make because I was so scared of a flop. Now I'm incorporating vlog style content as a regular part of my strategy and I'm actually seeing good results from it, but I wouldn't have been able to get there had I not experimented a little, seen what happens, and then acted on it. The point is if you want to evolve beyond a channel that's generating a bit of traffic through search into a channel that actually has a thriving community, you need to experiment and evolve try fresh forms of content, try something that you're scared of not performing well, and just see how it goes. Because oftentimes, yes, the kind of content that's really gonna nurture that relationship and build that community, it might not go viral, it might not perform well in search, but it's still a really key part of seeing success and longevity as a professional content creator. If you watch this far, then you definitely would be into my vlog. So I highly recommend checking out this one that I posted recently about how I stay productive, but also take care of myself during my work day. So make sure you watch that next. Let me know in the comments if you like the coffee chats with Katie. Really appreciate you watching to the end, my friend. And as always, I hope that you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.